What's the deal, peeps? It's been a while. Um, <clears throat> so, um, I don't know how. Like, I already kind of knew about this. I know a lot of a lot of us already know about this and have heard about this. And um, I don't know. I'm like kind of kind of connecting some pieces together on how they've been able to monitor us through throughout these times and um so what they have been utilizing obviously by pushing out these um these mandates that they've been trying to push out that people have been taking i'm not gonna say any words but you guys know what i'm talking about and uh I think they were putting graphene oxide in the first testing of some of them. But I think, like, they started removing it after, like, people started finding out. But <clears throat> they already kind of knew exactly what they were doing because they've been testing on, like, mice and whatever. Which I'm going to show you guys a bunch of evidence about. And what I'm thinking is, is that if 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 this graphene oxide is exposed to a certain electromagnetic field which they hit me with at night it activates it and it becomes electrical and then electrical charge is able to pass through these graphene so that's what i'm thinking that has c contaminated my ears and there there are solutions and stuff but but that's that's kind of like the only explanation i could think of because it just makes sense. Like, if I think about it, I'm just like, before, it wasn't um, able to, you know, they weren't able to break it up as easy. And then once they started adjusting the poles where I live and stuff like that, then not only that, but they, they've been putting graphene oxide in a lot of things. And plants, they've been spraying it in the freaking plains. They're putting it in our food. They're probably injecting it in our food. They're putting it everywhere because they want this stuff to gather up in your brain and which which is the main area they want that in because people usually don't mess with their ears. They don't know that you can block a lot of signals and electricity and, and sound. You can block it out, but, but now since they're putting it in everything, I think... My ears got contaminated, but anyways, I'm going to show you guys some videos right now. And I'm going to try to not uh, put ones that speak on, you know, certain topics. Because if you start saying certain words, they, they'll take this video down and I don't want it to get taken down. So I'm going to try to watch exactly what videos I post because some of them do have uh, information that they don't want me posting and shit so one second uh, so pretty much um yeah we're gonna go through these freaking videos bro um so first off i'm gonna play this video right here and so they're genetically modifying this right here. So you're going to put the pieces together. This is how they're spreading this stuff through multiple ways, different ways. All right. So it appears that the general public is still not fully informed on how toxic this citric acid truly is. So let's head over to your government's biotech website and see how they expose their own FDA. Here, your government explains how citric acid is found in nature. However, 99% of it is carried out using Aspergillus niger. Let's take a look at what Aspergillus niger truly is. Or finally, here they explain plain as day that the manufactured citric acid that is found in your manufactured foods is a mutant strain of the black mold. As okay, so pretty much what they have done is they put this mutant strain in order to have these these lemons or whatever fruits that you're eating that contain certain 
properties um, to put out this black mold. So when you eat this stuff, like the way naturally that it's grown, once they start genetically modifying food, it starts to build these things that you, which are able to communicate with the body. That's how they're able to track us because we consistently keep eating these certain things that they're putting in the food. And, you know, potatoes, chips, everything that you're eating is pretty much somehow connected in some way, shape, or form to, uh, you know, these, these fucking metals, heavy metals, and all kinds of different things. Fungus, fucking... Um, you know, so that's what I'm trying to get to is like, this is how they're doing it. For Gillis Niger. Here they explain how we've been tricked into thinking that the citric acid that is in your toxic foods is coming from lemons and limes. However, it's misleading because the citric acid that they're adding to our foods is coming from black mold. Here they expose their own FDA saying that manufactured citric acid is under the category as generally recognized as safe without any research. Let's read it out loud here. Thus, MCA was considered generally recognized as safe and did not undergo any FDA evaluation. MCA is one of the most common additives used today. Here they explain how the black mold version of citric acid is significantly different and may cause deleterious effects when ingested. Here they reference multiple case studies of people having toxic effects to this citric acid. You really need to understand that this citric acid is no joke and if it's being used as a preservative, they don't have to list it as an ingredient. It's in everything, even your meat products. We have to understand that this is not an accident. They're doing this on purpose and they have to tell us, otherwise they would not be posting this. And that's your biggest worry? Yes, any kind of virus, but most probably something similar to influenza. Because of air travel? Through the air, coughing. Uh, I'm sorry, I meant people on planes. Uh, that was something you described in your book. Yes, a new virus in Madagascar, say, could be in Chicago within a matter of weeks, and we end up with a global pandemic. Pan meaning all, the whole world becomes sick all at once. Hmm. And uh, Dr. Newman, you're also an epidemiologist. I presume the prospect of a viral pandemic keeps you up at night as well. No. No? No. All right, well, that's our show. <laughs> no, mankind has been at war with the virus from the start. Sometimes millions of people die as in an actual war, but in the end, we always win. Uh, but you, uh, just to be clear, you, you do think microorganisms pose a threat? Oh, in the most dire terms. Bacteria? No. You like saying no? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> not bacteria, not viruses, so... Fungus. <laughs> yes, that's the usual response. Fungi seem harmless enough? Many species know otherwise, because there are some fungi who seek not to kill, but to control. Let me ask you, where do we get LSD from? Where do you get it from? <laughs> it comes from ergot, a fungus. Psilocybin, also a fungus. Viruses can make us ill, but fungi can alter our very minds. There's a fungus that infects insects, gets inside an ant, for example, travels through its circulatory system to the ant's brain and then floods it with hallucinogens, thus bending the ant's mind to its will. Fungus starts to direct the ant's behavior, telling it where to go, what to do, like a puppeteer with a marionette. And it gets worse. The fungus needs food to live, so it begins to devour its host from within, replacing the ant's flesh with its own. But it doesn't let its victim die, no. It, it keeps its puppet alive by preventing decomposition. How? Where do we get penicillin from? Fungus. <laughs> oh. Dr. Schoenheist, you're in distress. Fungal infection of this kind is real, but not in humans. True, fungi cannot survive if its host's internal temperature is over 94 degrees. And currently, there are no reasons for fungi to evolve to be able to withstand higher temperatures. But what if that were to change? What if, for instance, the world were to get slightly warmer? Well, now, there is reason to evolve. One gene mutates, and an ascomycetia, candida, ergot, cordyceps, aspergillus, any one of them could become capable of burrowing into our brains and taking control, not of millions of us, but billions of us. 
Billions of puppets with poisoned minds permanently fixed on one unifying goal, to spread the infection to every last human alive by any means necessary. And there are no treatments for this, no preventatives, no cures. They don't exist. It's not even possible to make them. So if that happens, we lose. <clears throat> these trails of smoke that linger in the sky after certain aircrafts pass through? What if they aren't simply calm trails? The result of water or condensation vaporizing in low temperatures and high atmospheres. Today we're going to be talking about the theory that is chemtrails. Over the decades, there have been hundreds of protests to end the spray of chemtrails. There are many people that believe chemtrails are just another way for the government to control the masses, or it could be a way for them to test chemical weapons. There are even theories of things more sinister, like mind control, sterilization, or a way to carry out mass life expectancy reductions. Now, these theories are with good reason because scientists have actually tested chemtrails and found chemical evidence of things like arsenic, mold spores, aluminum oxide particles, yellow fungal mycotoxins, and even lead, amongst many other chemicals that are not usually found in plant exhaust. In part two, I will go ahead and explain the dangers of being exposed to chemicals like mold spores. Now, I have a video, I'm not sure where, but there's a mold that they're spraying that has a 90% infection rate. So, if you put these heavy metals there's aluminum, fungal, and these all play a part in building this circuitry in your body, in your brain. And this is how they're controlling and doing this, this bullshit to us, um, which it's, it's, kind of hard to get rid of and hard to protect yourself if it's in the air and it's always around you and it's in your food like it's like there's only so much we can do but this is this is how they're doing it this is obviously you know what i mean like the big picture of things and um yeah so i'm gonna try to you know whenever i bring you guys this stuff it's like now you know what to look for now you know what exactly like to look for as for cures and stuff like that you know so i would look up videos on how to detox from these certain things or how to remove them or kill them or whatever so there's always a solution to everything so once they started putting this stuff out more when they started making a movement towards getting this into people's bodies through certain, you know, lies that they were putting out there um, to make sure that these things are being spread properly and able to, um, you know, for them to see the results they wanted, they started to put... This is an LED street light. Let's see what's in They started to put these frequencies and, and these energies around us more because they react to these signals. They, I've seen them. Uh oh. Apparently, this is an LED 5G street light. It's pretty neat. This is an LED street light. Let's see what. This is an illness or something. That's them. One sec. Them controlling mice like little robots, like that they have total mind control. Uh, Forbes magazine, computer brain interface and mind control move one step closer to reality. I mean, this is just, it's, it's continuous. MassiveScience.com says, with new technology, mind control is no longer science fiction. We can only transmit basic signals between brains, but we should consider the ethics before moving forward onto complex thoughts. And of course, this is one of the things that uh, people have been warning about quite a bit, the presence of graphene oxide, which uh, is the you know, operative uh, material that they will put into a brain, and that actually responds to 
uh, wireless signals from things like 5G. And of course, 5G itself is just very short wave, very intense um, radio signals. And it's the exact same technology that microwave uh, radiation uses. And um, it literally is, is the exact same frequency and the same everything that you could turn into a or something. That's them. Con Recuerden ustedes que el magnetismo ya pasó del brazo a la cabeza. Tiene ahora cinco imanes de neodimio porque no tengo más en casa. Evidentemente los imanes los cogemos, eso no tiene ningún tipo de pegamento, como dice la boticaria García, que tendrá que responder. <risa> I mean, dude, they're fucking putting this shit everywhere. This, I mean, I don't know if the magnets stick to my head, but that would be fucked. I mean, this dude will probably get, if he was targeted, he'd get fucked with pretty badly. Um, but that's how you know you have, like, a, a super high dose of graphene into your body. If these magnets stick to your head like that, I mean, I would assume that you probably took something that they were giving everybody at a certain time, but I'm not sure, you know what I mean? Like, you guys got to check yourself. This is a great question, and there are a lot of factors to consider. I can pretty much guarantee you that they're already injecting this into livestock. They have also been working on this for a long time, which is especially suspicious if you pay attention to all the farmland that Bill Gates recently bought up. We already know about all of the heavy metals and other toxins in our tap water. We can definitely add this to the list. And bottled water is the same thing, just more plastic. And to top it all off, they are spraying this in the sky, contaminating literally everything. And let's not forget that those who received the you-know-what are shedding this to everyone else. And most people don't yet have a solid understanding of just what this is and just how absolutely incredible and terrifying it is. The potential of what this stuff can do, this is the future of everything that they're trying to achieve. This is the transhumanism. When you take into account what the Bible says about Satan being made of iron, that's where this comes from. It raises a lot of questions. The Bible also warns that for by their pharmakia were all nations deceived. Joe Biden just passed an executive order that makes clear that they are going to put this in absolutely everything and they've already started. There is not a safe pill that you can take or a safe injectable coming from Pharmakia. It is all full of this. Even the little letters that they print on the outside of your pill, that is made of graphene. And so what do we do? A large part of humanity is already contaminated with this and it's spreading. We must come together to put a stop to this and to educate ourselves on what this is and how to get rid of it. From what I've researched so far, heavy metal detoxing is a great place to start. Montmorillonite clay, bentonite clay work wonderfully. You can put them in the bath or you can actually get the food grade kind and drink it. You can put borax in the tub, Epsom salts in the tub, and soak to pull the heavy metals out of your skin. NAC, N-A-C, is a supplement that you can take. Chlorella, white pine needle tea. These are all things that will help protect you from this. And most importantly, Jesus Christ. There's power in his name. Amen. Friend. So what that means is is that graphene is um, a, a conductor, it can be, can be a conductor of electricity. If it has a positive charge, and, and this is in all the, some of the studies from the NIH and Moderna and stuff, if graphene gets a positive charge, it annihilates anything it comes in contact with. Right now, they're not charged, they're neutralized. You're like, well, how does it have a positive charge to get into the cell? That's that other lipid, that ionizable lipid that gives it the positive charge for cell penetration. But these currently are not um, they're neutral. They have a neutral field. Um, but if they are, if there is an electromagnetic field that activates a positive charge, um, potentially there will, we, there will be damage and potentially death, depending on 
where these nanoparticles ended up in people's bodies and how much of them did. So it's so, apparent to me that they're lying. Hold on, let me see. I got to make sure that it doesn't say something. To the world. Uh, they're trying yeah. to hide this. This is the, the secret ingredient. Uh, lead stories, USA Today, all these other publications fact-checking this program. It appears to me that they are out and out lying. We're going to get to who's in on all of this in a minute because I'm going to ask you, but why are they using this graphene oxide? It's a toxic substance. It's poisonous. Why, would, why are they using it? Um, be, because it's a great conductor of, elect, of electricity and it, it's a, it, it, can, it can host a magnetic field. So it, it can literally, it, it, it can connect you to the internet. That's okay. why. It can connect to the internet. So like this is pretty much like the best multi-purpose thing that they could use to get into your body, to fucking whatever. It's just, it's, it's like a smartphone, right? you keep wanting the best smartphone and shit or like anything that's good expensive out there okay well this stuff it's not it's easy to make but it's the best thing that they can use so what are they going to do with it they're going to put it everywhere listen to me guys this is so important i've talked about it before i've shared videos on it before but it is coming back up so because we're always about solutions, I wanted to put out this study, and I think this is really important with this whole graphene push. They're trying to put graphene into plants, put graphene into people, graphene into everything at this point. And it's important to be realizing that graphene can play a detrimental role on our health. So what can we use as an antidote to help heal our body? And basically what this study talks about is that humic acid acts as a natural antidote of graphene. Now, what are some sources of humic acid. You have chlorophyll, you have spirulina, you have chlorella, and you also have shilja. All four of those contain humic acid to help pull all of these nanoparticles out of the body. So it's important to be aware of this and aware of this study. And I wanted to put this out so that there are solutions to everything in which we face. The P. This is Elon. All right. This is something too I like. It is the 42 water bottle. Just click this button and watch the magic. The 42 water bottle ionizes your dirty tap water and turns it into hydrogen water. Hydrogen water has been proved to reduce inflammation and improve mental clarity. I think that, that, that I don't know, from what I've seen, I, I think this is what really works. So if you guys are interested, you should check it out. In this test, we're going to test the three bottles of hydrogen ionized so what they've done is through the okay so have a sanitary napkin here see how thin it is um, if you notice it's got the it has the 3d sides on it the sides are amazing the protective side okay now, if you notice, nothing happens, right? It's a seven watt light bulb. If you take it, you open this up. Here's the strip. Nothing happens. Once it gets wet, put it in the water. Once the, the graphene is a few strip, boom, it works. So when that strip is wet. Damn, I hope I haven't been breathing through this whole video. Uh, kind of, I'm using a, uh, a headphones.